child right now actually because this is absolutely kind of um, yes I do do a lot of talks but it's a little bit out of my comfort zone because um, as a child if all of you were playing I would have been in the corner kind of doing my own little thing making something up so um, thank you all for coming especially because um, it is morning time um, I, I just want to start um, I read a lot of magazines I'm sure you, all of you do as well a lot of creative ma magazines and in the creative magazines um, when they interview creative folk you know, musicians, artists, designers, illustrators, all that sort of stuff. Um, they always talk about, you know, how creativity was inherent in their upbringing, how their father was an architect, their mother was a seamstress, their uncle, you know, a guitar player from a famous or well-known um, band. Um, that wasn't my upbringing. Um, I kind of wish it was, but it wasn't. Um, I uh, had a very ordinary upbringing. Um, my parents were migrants and um, yeah, we had a very ordinary life in an ordinary suburb and the most important thing for my parents was that um, I was happy and you know they didn't really mind what I did just as long as I was happy and I guess for me happiness came in the form of um, making. So there wasn't any holiday in some sort of camper van when my father took pictures of us with Polaroids with dresses that my mother made, that, that wasn't my life. But um, I kind of did spend a making and I think in my bio I wrote that I was obsessed with making. Um, and I really didn't realise how obsessed I was until last week when I went to my parents' place because my mum said um, over the Christmas holidays, we can't move until you and your sister clean out your boxes. So <laughs> off I went to my parents and um, went through the boxes that I haven't been through for probably since I was a child and I found a plethora of stuff. And I found this um, diary. It was the only diary <laughs> in the... Um, in the box, and it was from 1988, and it was re re a compelling read of what a nine-year-old was. But um, <laughs> on, on the on the um, inside back cover, actually, making was so important in my life that I did a summary of what I made that year. So that year, I had made <laughs> a tissue box cover, a bell um, fan, ornaments, snowman umbrella. I don't exactly know how I made an umbrella, <laughs> but I did. Um, a picture frame, a girl and a pencil, I helped make a mouse, a um, few small umbrellas, dressed up a koala and a mouse dressed up. Um, I, also, <laughs> I, also read the, I also read the diary and I seem to have not done a very good job of um, doing a comprehensive inventory because that year I had also made um, one recipe book cover, one gum nut baby costume, <laughs> a total of um, six tissue box covers, two beds for Barbie, four dresses for Barbie, some sort of film, I, I don't even remember my dad having a video camera, a mixtape, an original piano composition, and yes, I did call it a composition, <laughs> um, some fiction and non-fiction works, including a hard-hitting bio on three generations of women in Australia, and then there was all, <laughs> and then there was all these imaginary games, obviously, that, um, that I made up. So I, I was quite um, busy. So... Um, uh, this was also what I found in the box, um, a picture of me at this typewriter that I was a bit obsessed with. Apparently this is where I wrote my hard-hitting biographies. Um, and I felt pretty special because we had cousins in Germany and they would send through stuff like, so there's um, textures on the right and they were just, obviously I was very fascinated by style then because they were so elegant and um, so I felt very special that they used to send over stationery um, to us all the time. But this is probably the only photo that I have um, of me kind of making something. All the other photos are, you know, birthday cake, birthday cake, and, and that, that's kind of it. So what else was in this box? Um, some tools of my trade, um, not, the, not the German textures, um, so some building blocks, um, a little journal where um, for the Easter hat parade I wanted to use, do you remember Fluffets? No, doesn't anyone remember Fluffets? You use those pens and, um, and then you put them under the hairdryer and it raises. Yeah, I wanted to use lace and fluffets to make um, a hat. 
I did some sort of snuggle pot cuddle pie. Oh, and we had this dot matrix printer that my dad had just bought, and you know it was very cool. So combine illustration with that. Um, a, a, a little story about a woman in the gold rush. Like I did a whole little bio on her. Um, oh, th this was um, something that kind of really surprised me. I, I designed a church. Um, <laughs> all, all, all the details, like that, it was a, everything from the altar to. Um, um, the Stations of the Cross, I was like, oh my god, colouring in books, um, you know, some fabric that I use for Barbie, some palettes. So yeah, this was all in the box. Anyway, the reason I guess, um, uh, when I went through this box, I, I think what I was looking for in the box wasn't what I got out of the box. And I think what I was looking for in, in, in the box was this validation of, oh yeah, creativity has always been um, part of me. And then I realised, well, actually, um, creativity is ubiquitous when it comes to children. Um, what I found in this box, every single one of you would have in your box, and so would your parents, and so would your partners, and so would your friends who are lawyers and, and doctors. I, I was no different or no more special than any other, other kid. Um, and the other thing that made me start to think about was how, you know, the term creativity has become this um, currency associated with artistry and craftsmanship. <coughs> um, and you know, if you're if you're in the industry of design or architecture or writing or music, mu um, being a musician, all of a sudden you're considered um, creative folk. And I was like, well, actually, I, I think creativity is so much more than arts and crafts. And I actually think um, creativity is in all humankind. However, some of us choose to pursue creative pursuits as a as a profession um, or a career. And to kind of um, I guess uh, support wh where I was going in my head, I started to think of um, my own child who he just turned two in um, December and he's absolutely, you know, I think he's a bit crazy and I, I, I love that he's um, crazy and he's absolutely creative but not necessarily always in the creative, you know, like doing these masterpieces. Um, and some of I mean, we all use social media. A lot of my friends and family have had kids and so I'm, I'm, I'm kept abreast of what all their children um, are, are doing. And they've been very generous and they've given me um, some of their photos as well. So I'm going to share with you some of these. Um, I'm, I'll try not to be too mumsy a, as I do it. Um, so this is my little boy um, two weeks ago actually um, <laughs> down at Hyde Park and there was a busker and he just decided to you know, take, bring on some moves. And I've never shown him how to move. Uh, no one's shown him how to move, but um, he, he has, a, has a way. I, I mean, when I saw this photo, I was so I impressed. You know, he was channeling a bit of Michael Jackson there, I thought. <laughs> um, and these girls, I just love the expression of these girls. But yeah, I was like, you know, the, you know there's this freedom and this imagination that my little son had just to bring, bring it on when in Hyde Park. Um, this is my um, friend Cara, her little girl, Iris. Um, I love that she made this um, crazy cat puppet out of a toilet roll, um, metallic pipe, um, what are they called, pipe cleaners? Yeah, uh, we didn't have metallics when I was young. I was very jealous when I saw this. And uh, you know, some milk bottle tops. Um, and you know, she put, posted this video of them dancing and I was like, oh my God, like you know, out of nothing she made something. Um, this is from my girlfriend, Karen. Um, apparently there were monsters on the bed. And so what, you know, what do you do when there's monsters on the bed? You, you pack on a pillow and a belt and you, know, you become a toddler mutant ninja turtle. <laughs> um, and then the, the same girls, um, they were fighting against the monsters together, now they're fighting against each other um, with kitchen colanders and, and bowls. Um, I, this is something my boy made actually over the weekend. I, I love what he does with Lego, it's so like absolutely wrong but it's just so right. Um, I, I love that you know you can get so high up and you can just get away on this um, little vehicle. Um, this is a video that my nieces made. Um, they're six and eight. I'll just play it. Yeah, so they're eight and six, and they're making um, these videos. Um, this was about monsters, um, and, and I, I mean, I, I loved it. It also made me scared because I'm like, oh my god, they're gonna pull me out of a job. Um, <laughs> they're, they're, yeah. This is my, um, I'm sure most of you know Chris Doyle, um, he's a good friend of mine and um, he posted this on Facebook last week and I was like, oh my god, this is fabulous. Um, this is his little boy who chose his own outfit today and, and um, Chris posted, um, I wish I had an ounce of the carefree joy and bravery my son has. He chose this out, um, outfit today, kids rule. 
I mean, that's absolute um, creativity. This is um, my friend Karen's nephew who made parachutes. That worked out of grocery bags. This is my little son, um, his first time ever painting, actually, which was only a few weeks ago. And when I asked him what he was painting, he said worms. And I was like, oh, yeah, of course, worms. <laughs> um, my friend Karen's little girl Freya, who was experimenting with where stickers are, um, go, you know. <laughs> um, and this is another video. <laughs> so all seems well in this little country village until the dinosaur takes over. And um, this is actually something that blew my mind. Um, on the weekend, my little boy um, came, so came up to me and said, Mama, yacht, yacht, Mama, yacht. And I was like, yacht, where's the yacht? And he pulled me into the kitchen, and there on the wall was a yacht. <laughs> so I, I was, yeah, I was a, a, I'm astounded. So um, I guess, um, yeah, I hope I wasn't too, um, too mumsy, but all those little um, notions that I saw through my friends and through my own little boy really started to validate my um, feeling that, you know, creativity in children is ubiquitous. It's kind of, you know, omnipresent and that, um, you know, like we don't know what Freya will become, what my son will become. Um, you know, they might become scientists or lawyers or doctors. They may not pursue creative things, become a designer or illustrator, but yet I, based on what they're doing right now, I mean, they're, creative, they're just as creative as those in creative professions, if not, like, sometimes I think my little boy is more creative um, than me. So I started to think about, um, you know, if, if creativity is the ordinary with children, um, what, is a, what is true creativity about? If, it's not about artistry, it's not about craft, craftsmanship. So um, I came up with a few things. Um, and, you know, if any of you have thoughts on this, please do um, share with me. Because as soon as I started to get into this uh, methodology, I started to think, wow, there could be a whole little um, piece on this. Uh, nothing is dangerous. Does, does anyone know what I mean by that? Want to have a go at that? No? Doing nothing. Sorry? Doing nothing. Doing nothing is dangerous. Um, uh, what I meant by nothing is dangerous, like, uh, I guess with children, you can take nothing and they will absolutely make something out of it. And, and that something is what's, it's, what's dangerous. Like, if I gave all of you a piece of paper right now, the potential of what that could be, you know, you're unlimited by, by that. You're unlimited by your ideas and, and by your ability to actually manipulate that piece of paper. And, and I think, like, you know, um, of my friend Cara and her little um, girl and how she took a toilet roll and some... Um, milk bottles and she made this, you know, incredible little puppet, you know, that, that's, that, that's nothing that's become a little dangerous. Um, and I think about, um, oh, like, you know, when I was going through my diary, you know, I, I want, Barbie was off to a ball and um, she didn't have any ball gowns and so, you know, it was a few months out of Christmas and I went through the house and I found this um, package for some crystal that had red satin in it. So I pulled out the red satin and, and I made um, a dress for um, Barbie that made Cindy very jealous. Um, <laughs> so I guess, you know, children are exceptionally resourceful. Um, they improvise, they're very, you know, they're adaptable. And, uh, you know, um, with Karen's little nephew, he made the parachutes. I, I, it was just one of those moments where going through all this stuff, I was like, wow, you know, they are exceptionally resourceful. And sometimes I think with us, you know, there's the technology, there's everything available at our fingertips. Um, we, we've, we, I guess we don't necessarily always make do out of what, what is out there. And sometimes um, creativity can come out of, well, extra creativity can come out of actually being um, bound or, or limited. The next thing, I'd like to meet Pete. <laughs> He's lost an eye on the travel. Um, Pete is, um, that's Pete pure and simple in all his glory. He's a hand puppet that my little boy um, and I made last um, few weeks ago, actually. And my little boy had a whole sticker sheet and um, he was adamant that the only two stickers he wanted on this um, hand puppet was that circle and that little um, moustache. And um, I, I thought that was really, really cool. You know, ki kids really reduce everything to the basic sim simplicity. And what I love about Pete the most is that, you know, um, Pete is so simple and basic, yet, you know, he's pretty incredible. He eats, he walks, he talks, he drives, he flies. Um, 
And what I love about him, he's just so uncomplicated un and unpretentious. And I think, you know, again, when you become a creative professional, um, we, get, we, we get so caught up in things and, and, you know, looking at my own childhood stuff and looking through uh, my friend's child, uh, you know, their, their children's moments, I start to think, you know, sim there's something, there's a gem in simplicity that we lose sight of when we, we become adults. This is a bad catcher. Um, every, every few months, my um, little niece from Brisbane, she comes down to Sydney and her and I go catching bats at, um, and with the bat catcher and we make bat, um, bat soup, it's very delicious. <laughs> and, um, and you know, the kids have this incredible um, freedom and they have this, you know, they're free of um, preconceptions, they're free of conventions, you know, it's pretty amazing. And, they're able to create um, concepts beyond, beyond reality. They take the ordinary and they make it extraordinary. It's, it's really all about you know, what's, what's possible. They build on experiences and they create experience. You know, this, is, you know, this is pretty a really lovely experience when we go out catching um, for bats. Um, you know, the, the humble croissant, um, my little boy, he likes it as a bead, also a tiara, and it's also Pete's favorite food. And um, and then a, then a stick. I mean, this, the humble stick can be so many things. I'm sure you guys have a multitude of other ways to use this stick. But, you know, screwdriver, sword, mud cake mixer, ruler, flagpole, they're all the things that I've seen my little boy use this um, st stick for. So, yeah, I mean, with freedom, uh, yeah, with ch childhood comes um, absolute freedom and, and, and imagina imagination. Um, this is my little boy's um, cat. Curiosity did kill him, but it didn't kill me, and it certainly didn't kill any of you because you're all um, you're all here. Um, <laughs> um, with I think you know when when I was a kid, um, I mum said that I asked a lot of questions. Apparently, the average kid asks 288 questions a day. I'm sure I would have like asked up to 400. You know why, mama, or when, dad, all those sorts of things. And I certainly see with my boy the curiosity, his appetite for curiosity. He'll dismantle things and then he'll rebuild them and. You know, with um, with car. You know, I was talking to my friend Karen, and you know, the girls have that same absolute appetite um, for for curiosity. Um, for curiosity, and and you know, the sticker thing with the thing with the stickers. That's curiosity. That's experimentation. Where can these stickers go? And and um, curiosity is not just about um, experimentation. It's about questioning and probing. And I think, um, like, I, I asked you the question: When was the last time you asked a question? Um, I think today we're so busy talking about ourselves, like I'm, I'm standing here talking about myself, that we lose sight of actually asking questions, but out of asking questions, certainly as creative professionals, you often you know, get to solidify a problem or clarify a problem or even get a response that triggers some sort of incredible um, idea. So I really ask you, go out um, and ask a question um, today. Where does the time go? Um, I'm sure as children you are all you remember that you lost absolute sense um, of time. There was, you know, no toilet. When you got into something and you were into it, you were into it. You weren't going to the toilet. You weren't eating. You weren't, you know, leaving that spot. And you know, I see it with my boy. You know, I sit him down with the Lego, and, and he's absorbed in the Lego for, for so much time. So much time. And my um, uh, brother-in-law said that the girls that make the videos will spend like literally all day just engrossed in making this singular um, video. And um, I'm not sure if any of you have, have heard of the um, word flow. Um, flow is, I guess, what this moment is when you're lost in time. Um, it's, I believe flow is this um, notion of absolute um, happiness and harmony. It's when you're in this state of absolute bliss that you're not thinking about other things. Um, you're just caught up in, 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 in what you're doing. And I think, um, again, you know, in, in today's world, we get so caught up. You know, there's so many things to do and we're very distracted. It's very hard to get in that state of um, flow. And there's two great things that come out of flow, which is, you know, this sense of um, harmony. Um, with oneself and then also, you know, great um, productivity and quality of output. Um, this is a paper plane. Um, what do you call a plane that doesn't fly? What do you call a plane that doesn't fly? A guide. <laughs> Sorry? Does someone say something else? No? Um, well, I, I thought there would be some fancy word for a plane that doesn't fly and, and I asked someone who works in aviation and they said it's a failure. 
And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, yep, yeah, right, well, it, you know, that, that's the absolute truth. A plane that doesn't fly is a failure because the intent is, is to fly. And I think failure is such a hard word, like it would never be a word I'd like to use these days and it comes with so much baggage and, and I, I don't know, you know, you don't want to think about children who fail, but the thing is like, if you all think about your own childhood, we failed all the time. Um, and, you know, certainly with this paper um, plane, that's what happened, you know, I, I wanted to make paper planes. I saw the boys doing it in school and I wanted to do it. And, and I, I don't even remember how many I had to make to actually get a paper plane um, that actually flew across the, um, the, ro the room. But I just kept on going until um, one plane actually worked. And I think with failure, you know, you get yourself back up, it builds a bit of resilience, you try again, but also um, you, le you learn. And, and for next time I know, okay, not to make that fold this way, oh, I need to, you know, put a bit of reinforcement, all those sorts of things. Um, in the name of um, love. So I guess what I wanted to say about childhood and creativity in this respect was um, going through my box and um, I guess this is a very um, personal um, kind of anecdote, but going through my box I realised um, the love of... Uh, the, when I was making things when I was a kid, it wasn't about the love of necessarily, you know, tissue box covers or picture frames, but it was the, the love of the power and, and um, the connection that that object actually created. So making that gum nut um, costume, you know, like I think I was snuggle pot and someone else had to be cut apart. So there was this connection with someone else um, that came with that. And, and for me, um, this notion of making or um, creativity in, in, in children is about understanding the world and, and certainly for me it was about um, a way to connect with people and a way to um, connect um, w with the world and and um, I guess you know I, I kept on thinking about how is this different to, to now I guess this is the thing that I was doing when I was putting this together I, I was like well you know in, in, when I was a kid it was all about the love of that connection and I thought well I think sometimes it's very easy in today's world to get caught up in um, style and, you know, when you were a kid, it was all about, you know, substance. It, it really didn't matter if it worked or how it looked, but it was about how, you know, I see with my boy when he, he makes a little egg carter mask and gives it to me, you know, he's just got pure joy in his eyes as I've got, you know, pure joy in, rece um, in receiving it. Um, I think ultimately for me, you know, when I started to think about, you know, what is the truth of creativity and certainly what can childhood teach us about creativity, it's, it's that creativity is about problem solving. Um, <laughs> no one is better than problem solving than a, than a kid. And, you know, I'm sure if you've got nephews and nieces or even if you recall your own childhood, the ability to think laterally and literally, the ability to think in and outside a problem, around the problem. You know, I said to my boy the other day, um, he was climbing on the windowsill via the lounge. I said, don't climb the windowsill via the lounge. So he got himself some nappy boxes, pushed them up against the windowsill, got some cushions, and up he got onto the windowsill. I mean, you know, I said not to go via the lounge. He, <laughs> he was pretty clever. Um, something that, you know, in that little video piece, um, my, uh, John, my brother-in-law, was saying when he was sitting down with the girls and they were making this video about these people who go to the shops, um, he, was, he was like, oh, I'm not sure if this is, you know, um, interesting enough. Well, they added a dinosaur and turned it upside down. So by um, adding a little bit of drama, they created a bit, bit you know, solving the problem. Um, the one that, you know, I, I love the most, and I was telling the girls at work recently, was um, every morning I unveil the day for my little boy, which means I get up to a window when I pull up the blinds, I go, I'm unveiling the day, what sort of day will it be today? And, um, you know, last uh, few weeks ago, it was really grey. And I said, oh, darling, I'm really sorry. It's, it's really grey. You know, there's no sun. And he ran off and came back with a sticker from his sticker book and stuck the sun on the window and said, sun, sun. And I was just like, oh, my God, how? I mean, he certainly brightened my, my day. But that's absolutely, that's absolute um, problem solving. And, and so for me, you know, um, what we can remind ourselves about, you know, childhood and creativity is that notion of, you know, just pure, genuine um, ideas and, and, and solutions for anything that comes your way in any shape or form that, that could, may be. Um, and finally, you know, it, it's one thing to have ideas and solutions, but it's another thing to be Batman. Um, <laughs> this is my little boy's favourite T-shirt. I, I don't know why it's his favourite T-shirt, because I've never told him who Batman is. Um, no one has. Um, yet he always wants to wear it to daycare. Um, 
But I started to think, you know, what is it about children? Um, and I thought every child, you know, just like I believe every child um, is creative, I actually believe every child has superpowers. And what I mean by superpowers is that, um, you know, they have a boldness and a, and a bravery that I think when we get older, we, we start to get really cautious and we really start to evaluate risks. But I'm sure all of you remember when you were a kid, like your heart used to thump with courage and, you know, like, you know, blood didn't run through your veins, conviction did. Like when you implicitly believed in something, you just went for it. And um, I think, you know, going through my box and, and seeing the stuff that um, I did as a child and, you know, also reading my journal and seeing how I thought, I was like, you know, I, I just believed in things and, and I had the courage to actually um, see, see them through in whatever shape or form um, they, they would be. So um, that's a little snapshot of where my head's been in the last few weeks around childhood and creativity. So I, I kind of, um, I just want to end on a little note, which is like I all ask you to, um, I'm sure you've all got little boxes like me, or not little, big ones, <laughs> at your parents, um, to go and um, have a look at them, or if they're not at your parents, to go wherever they are in your apartment or in your home and have a look through them and, and not for the sake of reminding yourself, oh yeah, you know, I was so creative when I was little, but I guess um, reminding yourself of um, what true creativity is about and um, taking that, um, bringing that child back into your life and bringing some of that back into your work. Thank you.